Hello everybody, so some people asked me to do a video on air layering, so this is it here today. We're going to be doing air layering on aqua tree as you can see behind me here. In terms of materials, we're using foil, a knife, rooting hormone, um, peat moss soaked in water, and two pieces of plastic to tie the top and the bottom of the foil that we're going to be using here today, right? First thing to talk about now is... The location where you're going to be doing your air layering. I like to use younger branches because it's less hardy and dense than the older branches so it would be easier the level of difficulty going to be less with a younger branch than an older branch. In terms of the time you should be air layering I find that um, when your tree is showing active development and growth like you have nice young fresh leaves here that is be a good time to do air layering and um, your location where you're going to be the, doing the air layering now. I wouldn't do it quite to the top of this branch here because the branch is going to be a little more brittle. So I prefer to do it where the branch is a little more firm. So as you can see I chose this location here to do the air layering. I already did the first step here now which was remove the leaves from my workstation. And I removed a one inch piece of bark right around. the tree here right how I did this was you just mark do a mark to the top of the area you're going to be earlier in um, just below the back and the second one one inch distance would be sufficient right and then I put a mark going down the back here and remove this entire piece of back right around so the next step now from there we're going to continue. The next step would be to do a light scrape right around the wound you created on the tree, right? You do a light scrape and remove it as a button layer of film. Now this is important because this will prevent the tree from healing and allow for root development instead, right? So you're sort of breaking the connection between up here and down here right and now we're going to look to pause here to root once you're done your light scrape and you remove the layer of film the next step would be to apply some rooting hormone as you can see here right around the wound you created right Nice and coated there. Now the other step going to be cutting a piece of foil that could fit the circumference of the the place you're going to do the earlier in. And it's going to be have to be thicker because the foil have to accommodate for heat moss, which would act as the soil for the development. So that's what we're going to do now. So I have my moist peat moss inside the foil as you can see here. What we're going to do now is wrap this around the wound you created, right? So I make sure the foil there and the dirt is in position. Well, the peat moss, the peat moss here. Try and make sure the, the moss going around the circumference of the tree, you see? Covering the circumference. And you're just tightening up this right here, straight around. So we have a nice seal there as you can see. Now what's left to do is take your plastic, put that tie on the top here, tighten it up. That's just to keep the foil, on, the foil in place prevent it from opening out because you want the moisture to remain inside of there and you don't want too much of like rainfall passing through and getting rid of your peat moss that you have stored inside there right so that is why it is important to tie the top and the bottom
Now what you're going to do here now is you're leaving this for about a month and a half time, a month and a half time to two months time. You could check for root development, give it a little open, a little peep. Once you see roots developing in that, and you find that the root development looking sufficient, like within two months it should be good. A month and a half to two months it should be good. Um, then you're just doing a cut right below the foil, about an inch below the foil, the end of the foil. And um, you're transplanting that in some dirt and you're leaving it to develop. Well, I think you should you should keep it in like a kind of cool area just because um, the Eliad piece was partly dependent on the tree and the roots that it developed, right? So you don't want it in too much a harsh condition. So you keep it in a little cool place that the roots develop further and then you could go ahead and transplant it wherever you see possible. Our next step I should tell you all whoever interested in planting cocoa Cocoa, you just have to plant cocoa in the shade of other trees or where it gets some partial shade. If you plant cocoa in the open sun, most likely it leaves when it's a fall off and thing, right? Now, another point is, um, if you earlier, like further down on the tree, you know, if I did the earlier further down, now we'd have a bigger, a bigger plant here, right? But, when time to cut it after two months, for a month and a half, the roots might be not developed enough to sustain the size of the tree. So like in a previous video, I showed you all that earlier saw sub that I did. And because I thought that the size of the tree and the amount of roots was too little to sustain the size of the tree, I ended up cutting the top of it, right? So the roots would be able to handle the plant. Now after that, I transplanted it. And as you can see here, it's starting to send out other shoots. So it's, it's alright to do a cut in the tree if you think the roots not enough to sustain the size of the plant that you remove, right? So after a month and a half, two months time, you see root development here. Yeah, feel free to cut it off and transplant your plant. And that is the end of that. Simple things. So while all your home. Take a little practice, you know, do something. If you have any questions, you could always ask if I could answer, I will answer, right? Take care.